microphone down a little bit. <clears throat> With any luck at all, people can actually uh, hear me. The microphone's a lot closer to me. So I was informed um, earlier today by a uh, well, a Twitch user who's always been there in my streams, uh, checking out technology and playing around with uh, programming and just generally, you know, learning and having fun. And uh, he told me <clears throat> today, besides the fact that he wasn't feeling well, that um, Twitch had taken down the video that I'd made of how to install uh, Debian Linux. And I realized that, I guess with Twitch, videos will age. And then when they age, they get taken down. It's just that simple. They don't have infinite storage. But that's okay. I tend to download any video or any stream I do. I tend to download it, and then I, uh, I'll upload it up to uh, YouTube at some point. But I feel that this one is um, uh, of considerable importance only because I do so much stuff with Linux that it's helpful to other people to know, well, how do you even install it just to get started? Just the basic stuff to get started. So one more time with enthusiasm, I wanted to do that. And I was going to do it relatively quick, quickly. I wasn't going to be incredibly verbose about it. Um, I was just going to cover off the basics. Rule number one is uh, get a decent piece of hardware to do it on. You can do it in a virtual box in Windows. In Windows, you can download a uh, download a product called VirtualBox, and that's now owned by Oracle. You can install that in Windows, and with that, you can create virtual machines and install into that if you want. That, that works. Mark, how you doing? Um, I was talking about you earlier. Uh, a couple of the guys were talking about chess games, and then we did a review of some chess games, and I reiterated once again a piece of advice that you gave me, which was don't play to win. Just play to get the best position or a reasonable position. Look for the good moves. Don't play to win. And then let the position lead you to a situation where winning is possible. Um, hey, Amy, you are exactly the reason why I'm doing this video because you had such a hard time the other day. And, in, and then, obviously, I got told by Barada that, they'd, that Twitch had taken down the video. They had taken down the video that I had done of how to install Debian. So I said, okay, I'll do it again, but I'll do it again without being too verbose about it, just the basics. Um, and if you don't install on a MacBook Air and ain't real, well, I can assure you that I've got no love at all for anything produced by Apple. None. Zero and the MacBook Air even less. The idea of a laptop or any computer, any modern computing device that has no network access at all other than Wi-Fi is a mistake. Um, anyway, I'm doing this video so that you can review it later. Um, I'm going to start off with the basics, which is uh, download the stable edition from Debian. Now, to download Debian, you can literally just do a search on Google of, let's see, well, you do a Google search and you'll end up on this page, how to download the Debian CD or DVD images, which is really easy. If you got a Windows machine, I'm pretty sure you can figure it out. And I strongly suggest go to the stable release the testing release is strictly for advanced users who want to play around and know how to fix things when things break. Stable, on the other hand, it just works. So the stable releases here, go to a DVD image for AMD 64, that's x86 stuff, um, and that's all I'm going to look at today. There's a lot of other stuff I can do, but I'm going to do this one. When you get here, Scroll down and look for where it says, hey, just in case you need, you know, for convenience, um, they also make an install image which includes firmware stuff just in case you need firmware for 
awkward hardware. Okay? Awkward hardware. Please bear in mind that Apple MacBook Air is about as awkward as it gets. I'm going to say it's outright dysfunctional is what it is. It's completely dysfunctional. Anyway, go here. Go to this thing, including firmware, right? And go right to 10, at the very top, version 10. That's stable. Plus the non-free firmware. Go in there, click AMD64, and go right to this big DVD image, ISO DVD. Don't bother with BitTorrent, JigDo, or any of this other stuff. Just go to DVD, right here, ISO DVD. And then download this bloody big file, which is 3.6 gig. It'll have everything on it that you need. Download that. Then you need to figure out on your own, if you got Windows, how to put that onto a USB key. I strongly suggest, based on observations that I've made of other people, like um, Amy, who has tried this over and over again. She sometimes spends half an hour to 45 minutes just on the USB key, just trying to get that to work. Um, it shouldn't be that difficult. Get something which is a valid product. Now, in this case, this is a Kingston memory. I don't know if you can see that. This is a Kingston memory USB 3.0 device. I mean, it's proper quality, comes with a serial number, comes with a warranty, it works. And then you need to put that into a USB port on the machine. Now in this case I'm doing it on a Lenovo laptop. I'm just going to slide this uh, USB thing into a USB port here. Furthermore, I am going to be using, for the purposes of this stream, a USB keyboard. Okay, And I'm going to use the USB keyboard because that way um, it's a lot easier for me to type while doing a stream. Let me just bring up this camera here. I think that's reasonable resolution. You can probably see what you need to see. Um, I'll try to take away light sources that are not helping at all. And let's just see what happens when I turn this on and hold down the F12 key. I'm going to just turn this on and hold down F12 keys. I need it to boot and ask me, um, do you want to boot for some alternate device? And the answer is I do. Oh, there we go. Well, it, it went right away. Instantaneously, it went right to the bootable USB key. Maybe I should back up and do that again. I'm going to turn the whole machine off. Done. Machine is off. It's a very fast machine, by the way. Very fast. I'm going to hold down F12, turn it on again. And let's just see. There we go. We get a menu. There's an internal hard drive. There's a, well, it's called a CD or DVD drive. It does have a DVD drive in it, unlike the MacBook Air, which doesn't have this stuff. And then here's the Kingston Data Traveler, which is a USB 3.0 device. Very fast. Go with that. Hit Enter. And you get a beep, and here you go. Okay. I am not going to do a graphical install. I'm going to do this all from the keyboard. And we're going to go right to Advanced Options. Now, I wonder if that's going to focus for you, because sometimes that's not too bad. That's not too bad. That's at least reasonably. And the timer is running. It's uh, 1939 hours. And I'm just going to hit enter here on advanced options and go to expert install. You can do it. You really can. It's going to bring up a really simple interface. The kind of simple that everybody wants. Complex is not needed. Simple is what we all like to see. So let's do this simple. Okay? So, that being the case, um, I'm going to use a keyboard now to do things so that I can choose a language. The language you're going to choose for doing an installation is nothing, no language. Go right to the top for C, no localization, just do that. 
make your life easy during install. All this other stuff we can play with for localization later. And then choose where you are for your location. And that's because you're going to need to bring in stuff from off of a, uh, a network server out there. Debian brings in most of its good stuff from off of a network server. So go there. In my case, I'm going to go to Canada. And right away, now I'm going to pick what's called locale or localization type stuff that allows me to support multiple languages. And I will actually say, sure, English, Canadian, as if it was different that much from English, Great Britain, we do actually have the queen on our money. Let's go down here to USA. USA. Yeah, let's go here to the land of Trump. Uh, you don't really need all three of these, but we'll take all three anyway. And that's it. Just hit the tab key um, and, and go to where it says continue. There's continue right there. Hit enter. Again, what's the default locale for the installed system? It's going to be just C. Don't pick anything else. Keep it at just C. C is a language. As far as computers are concerned, that means POSIX or Portable Operating Systems Interface. It's a very systems compliant, easy way to go. Just say C. Don't make your life difficult. I don't need to access any software for a blind person using a Braille display. It's nice that Debian built it in. Configure the keyboard. Just go down to configure the keyboard, hit enter, and take American English at the top, unless you've got a Dvorak keyboard or some special keyboard. American English. Done. Hit enter. Done. Detect and mount the CD-ROM. Well, the truth is I'm going to detect and mount the USB key. That's what it's going to do. And it will. It goes out, detects it, checks its contents, and says, hey, found it. Calls it a CD-ROM drive. But in truth, it's just Debian Linux 10.0. Hit continue. Load installer components from the CD. This is a baffling part for most people. Um, this is expert install. I'm going to make some suggestions on stuff that you can load in in advance to make life easy during the installation. And I will show you that these things make sense. Choosing a mirror to install from. A mirror means a mirror server out there someplace that's going to provide us with the, um, the Debian software pieces that we need. Because not everything's going to the USB key. Not everything. A lot, but not everything. Okay? So, forget crypto, driver injection, a lot of this stuff you don't need at all. Okay? But to partition a hard drive, we're going to need that. Because we are going to be writing to a hard drive. We need to partition our hard drive. So we select that guy. Um, let's see. Master boot record. Yeah, we need that because we're going to be making a bootable uh, machine with a master boot record. Just take it. It's part of, it's almost kind of like the partitioning stuff. Okay, now this one here. Network console, which allows me to continue remotely. Fantastic feature, and I'm going to be using that today. Open SSH, also for the remote installation, remote installer. We're going to be doing that today. Here we go again. Another manually partition a hard drive with Parted. Parted is a tool. Select it because this up here, F disk, and this down here, Parted, those two pieces for partitioning tools and setting up a hard drive are needed. And then all the way down to the bottom, I think there's pretty much nothing else here that we really care about. Well, rescue mode says if you want to start up a shell and do certain things with it, sure. We're, I'll do that anyway. Um, that's it. That's all we need. That stuff. So whatever you see on the screen right now, select those items and hit the tab key. If I can see it. Continue right there. And it's just going to load that stuff in off the USB key, which is a 3.0 USB key, Kingston memory, top quality, high speed. This will be over very quickly. That was quick. Now, detect network hardware. This does not work very well on a MacBook Air. It doesn't. 
the hardware in a MacBook Air will not be detected. There's like the support for it has to be dealt with later. It's just a nightmare. So I'm, I'm sorry. It's the truth. Hit enter. It'll do some fancy little probing thing. Go away. And it will come back in a moment. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Do, 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 There we go. So it's moved. Detect network hardware is done. Now we go to configure the network. For this, most of you are just going to use DHCP. I'm going to actually put in manually an IP address. Enter the maximum time you'd like to wait for the network link detection. Whatever it says there, just hit enter and accept it. If it says three seconds, that's fine. Here I have two interfaces. I have a wireless device because this is a laptop made by Lenovo, fully supported. And I've got a wired interface that I can actually plug in right to the thing. I'm going to use the wire. Auto configure networking. I'm going to say, for me, I'm going to say no. For me, I'm going to say no. For you, you may just say yes, and it'll automatically do all kinds of detection stuff for you and set up your network for you. I'm going to say no and show you manually how I set up the IP address on this thing. So here's where I type in my IP address for this machine. Just like that. Of course, I already know my subnet. I know all this IP address in, in advance. You may not need this at all because you're just going to use automatic configuration, DHCP. If you don't know networking at all, it's hard to explain this part. Gateway, whatever my local router is, yeah, I'm going to take that. Name server, I can put in any name server I want. So I will. I'm going to use a name server, which is local, which is, it's my name server. You can use anything. You can use Google 8.8.8.8 if you want. That's if you don't mind Google watching everything you do. Is this information correct? Yes, it is. Hit enter. Configure the network. Now it's going to look at IP version 6 type stuff. Just hit enter here for waiting time. Let's give this machine a name. I'm going to call it Sticks. S-T-Y-X. Like that. And I'm going to stick it in a domain. Because I have one. You don't have to. You can make one up. You can make one up if you want. There we go. Continue installation remotely using SSH. Beautiful. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay? That's exactly what I'm going to do. So, in here it's going to say, give me a password. Okay, password. I'm going to make one up. Something really simple, like Fred Flintstone or something like that. That's it. We're done dealing with the machine hardware here, sitting on my desk with a remote USB keyboard and all that stuff. It says right there, I'm going to log into the thing over the network, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to unplug this keyboard. I don't need it anymore. Take this out of here. I'm just going to move the machine to, um, well, someplace out of the way. That's what. Move this keyboard while I'm at it. Bear with me for a second while I move stuff around. I'm going to unplug it. And away it goes. There we go. Oh, something just went. Well, I see. The whole screen went blank because uh, of a timeout. Screen, screen saver, it's called. Screen saver. Wonderful idea, whoever invented it. Flying toasters. Let me grab my power here for this thing because I'm going to run it for a while. I don't want it to suddenly go battery dead on me. And I'm going to move the camera. One second while I move the camera around, okay? One moment, please. You can listen to the hold music, which is the sound of me going, la, 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 la. And I know what you're thinking. Why don't I sing more often, right? Why don't I sing more often? So, one second, please, while I move the camera around. Uh, 
and it should work like that. That's all you need to see of me. Trust me, I'm not that pretty. I had some textbooks here, which I was using to balance the, 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 um, the camera on. C programming, the POSIX programmer's guide, writing solid code, which was written inside Microsoft. Um, we got the computer architecture book here by, um, this is by uh, 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 Hennessy and Patterson. And I've got the X Windows Systems Programming Guide and Applications in uh, with XT, which we'll get all we'll get to that some other day. You know, that's all code and programming stuff. I'll just put this away. We don't need the textbooks. Meanwhile, the machine is sitting on the network waiting and saying, "Well, you said you wanted to do an installation. Are you there? Is anybody going to come out and play?" And the answer is absolutely bloody we are. And I'm going to just go grab. A terminal now on Windows. In truth, you don't have to do this. I mean, you could just do the whole thing sitting at the machine. What I'm about to do next is the same thing you're going to see if you were sitting in front of the machine. It's just I decided to do it remotely um, in a comfortable sit-down kind of situation. Now I'm hoping this is going to be visible to you. There we go. Uh, and I'm probably going to get some kind of a security warning. That's okay. This part's hard to explain. You might be better off just to like, yeah, I'm going to get a security warning. It says, this is a new machine. I don't know who this is, and I've never connected with it before. Yes, I want to connect to it. My simple bloody password, and that's it. There's the installer. So now I'm going to go to expert mode and move on. Configure the network's already done. We're on the network. It's running now. The network is running. So, choose a mirror of the Debian archive, and you've got to go to someplace local in your country, someplace which is nearby, and I strongly suggest you just pick a big one which is nearby. Now, I got the Computer Science Club, University of Waterloo, right around the corner, and just a second, I want to... Um, I want to adjust the screen over here because I left the screen on in this. One second. I'm also checking a network connection, a firewall connection, sorry. I have a, a secure environment where I have to ensure that this machine is allowed to talk out to the world. And I'm just setting that up right now. You'll probably not have these problems at all. You'll probably have a wide open network that goes out to the world without any consideration at all for security. I, on the other hand, have security concerns. So that's what I'm doing right now. It'll only take me a second, usually. Talk amongst yourselves. Make a coffee. This will take 90 seconds. All right, that's done. Should work fine now. At least that's the theory. Okay. Should be able to talk to the world now. All right. I don't even need my mouse. My mouse is irrelevant right now. It doesn't do anything. So I'm going to go to University of Waterloo. Um, I got no proxy. There's no security stuff. Just hit enter. Gone. That's it. It went out. It talked. It brought in information. Done. Now I'm going to set up a user. Shadow passwords. Yes. Do that. Login is root. Yes, do that. Password for the root user. Make this a really good password. It's the password for the machine itself. I'm going to type in something here. Create a normal user account. Yes, create a normal user account right now. Go ahead. 
Um, the full name for this guy can be Boffo the Clown. I really don't care. Boffo the Clown. That's my user. The username? Yeah, we'll call him Boffo. Why not? Sure. This is just a user so you can log in for the first time and maybe set up stuff. I'll, I'll leave him there as Boffo. That's fine. Password for Boffo. Let me come up with something. Done. That's it. Configure the clock. Yes, I'm going to be using NTP, which is Network Time Protocol. And I'll be using a local NTP server, which is a Stratum 1 atomic clock. You got your own, wherever you may be, or you just, just hit enter and accept whatever the bloody thing says to you. Just accept, you know, just accept what the Debian installer suggests. Uh, UTC is what I always use. As far as I'm concern, concerned, a computer is always in Greenwich, England. Computers are on UTC, end of story. Users can be anywhere they want. So when a user logs in, you can set up any time zone you want. But the computer is in UTC. Detect disks. It's going to go off and go looking for some disks. All right, good. Now partition disks. Hit enter. This may be a little bit scary, but we're going to do it so stupid easy. We're going to say guided use the entire disk. Keep it simple. Hit enter. Now pick up which disk. You, well, I've got multiple disks in this thing. I've got a SD card. I've got, well, don't overwrite the bloody Kingston data traveler. The Kingston USB key we're using right now. That is the internal hard drive. SDA. Hit enter. All files in one partition recommended for new users. Just hit enter. And it'll come back with some information. I'm only interested in SDA. I've, I've got multiple disks in this machine. Like there's the Kingston USB thing. There's an SDIM that's actually plugged into the, the machine also. I forgot about it. There it is. And I've got, well, that's it. Just say finish partitioning and write the changes to the disk. It's going to say, yes, are you really sure? You want to write the changes to the disk? Say, yes, yes, yes. And it goes off and it sets up the hard drive for you. Could take a second or two. I was hoping to have this done by the top of the hour. Install the base system. Hit enter. And off it goes. At this point, it's now installing actual software onto your hard drive. And me, I even had some really great past over here, which is losing its temperature. Hmm. Well, it's Linguini. A little bit of Linguini. Well, I'm using a, a, a gnocchi um, noodle with a Linguini sauce, a basil Linguini, and also um, some shaved Parmesan cheese in there. Um, okay, when it comes finally back here and says, hey, what do you want for a kernel? Take the one in the middle. Don't say none. Don't go with the one with the big fancy numbers on it. Just take the one in the middle. So yeah, I'll take that. And then I'll ask you, uh, what do you want? Do you want a targeted system which only has drivers or generic? Throw in everything. Go with generic. Throw in everything. Make your life easy. And away it goes again. And I also uh, uh, fried up some mushrooms in butter uncovered so that they don't get mushy and then those go in and asparagus tips which also got sauteed uh, separately that was with sesame seed oil and a little bit of olive oil actually and then still to maintain the crunch that, that all that's done separately and then added later hmm configure the package manager yes use a network mirror yes and again, select the same thing that you're using with the installer. I think I got myself a network hang. Or I mean, my uh, internet bandwidth has uh, 
taking a pause. Woo! Go back. What happened? Anyway, with any, I think maybe I just said a network burp. A network burp, otherwise known as the internet, went away for like 15 seconds. And that happens once a week, maybe. It just happened now when I'm streaming. Use non-free software, say yes. Just take everything. Source repositories, yes. Take that too. And eventually we're going to get right back to services to use security updates and release updates take those two don't change anything just say yes take that stuff do 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 select and install software finally here you're going to get to pick what what kind of software do you want in the system and i i like to keep things simple so i want a graphical desktop i can use but I want it to be a simple graphical desktop. I don't want some big, fancy, fluting, seriously busy, like KDE is a really busy, busy thing. Oh, updates. Updates? I don't want any automatic updates. I'll put in updates myself, thank you. You can go ahead if you want to say security updates, put them in automatically. I do no automatic updates. Participate in the package usage survey. I always say yes. I'm going to let the Debian people know what software I use. That way, that software is always considered to be of value. Okay. I want a desktop environment. I'm going to use LXDE. You can pick any one of these. Cinnamon is actually apparently really sweet, and you can have multiple. You can pick whatever desktop you want. You want KDE Plasma, which is huge. No, no, LXDE. I need SSH server. I do not need a print server. I have no interest in printing to HP printers or anything. But I do need to be able to log into this thing over the network. That's SSH. That's it. Pick all that. Hit enter. Go away and eat lunch if you've got a slower machine. I mean, my machine is just blazing fast. Wow. Real fast. And that's it. You don't want to hear me. So, what I'm going to do is turn off the microphone, sit back, eat pasta, and watch that little red bar go across the screen.
Okay, that was pretty darn fast. Install the Grub bootloader on a hard disk. The answer is yes, because Grub stands for the Grand GR Grand Unified Bootloader. And that thing allows you, if you wanted to, you can run multiple operating systems on the same machine. You can have Windows and Linux at the same time. Um, you can have Windows and Linux and Ubuntu and whatever else all at the same time on one machine. Just don't try to install cubes unless you've got really the correct hardware. Hit enter. For a moment there it said looking for other operating systems. There are no other operating systems. Install the Grub bootloader to the master boot record. Yes. Now it's going to say which drive you're probably only going to have one. I just happen to have three. The USB key is one of them. Don't touch that. SDA, almost always that's going to be the winner. This is a difficult question. It seems that this computer is configured to boot via EFI, an extended format interface. In fact, i got to look this up because there's UEFI, there's EFI, there's all this different stuff about force grub installation to the EFI removable media path. Just say yes. It's a new machine. Rusty camera. The bit. Hey there, man. I, I just had to redo this. I had to redo this completely because um, someone earlier told me that, Ed, how you doing? Ed or Edward? I think it's Edward. Um, someone earlier told me that Twitch had taken down my video on how to install Debian Linux. So I just went through the whole thing carefully, slowly, showing exactly how to do it. And I'm keeping it to, you know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes or something like that. I'm going to hit finish the installation here. Okay, Edward. Uh, is the system clock set to UTC? I already said earlier, UTC is the way to go. Just say yes. Installation is now complete. It's time to boot your new machine. Make sure to remove the installation media so that you boot to the new system rather than restart it. Okay. So I'm going to hit enter here, which is continue. The machine's going to reboot. And I'm just going to pull out, I'm going to pull out the USB key. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit enter and pull out the USB key. There's the USB key. That's back. It did its job. And the machine itself is actually rebooting. It's a very fast machine. I think what I'll do is I'll uh, close this window, which was used for the installer. Gone. And I'm going to open up another one. In the Windows world, you might be using um, something called PuTTY. P-U-T-T-Y. PuTTY is what you might be using. And, you know, I could. I could fire up Windows and just show that, but I'll do that some other day, because PuTTY is a whole discussion all on itself. It's a whole discussion. Um, I've got all kinds of different X terminals and stuff. If you're on Windows, though, you're going to be using PuTTY. And I'll do a different stream on that some other day. Okay, so I'm going to SSH to that machine. Dash 2, dash 4, dash E. I just happen to know the options. Boffo the Clown, that was our guy that we created. 172.16.35.2, that was the IP address. Give me the password. Done. That's it. That's the machine sticks. We just did the install. You name. It says it sticks. Uptime. One minute. That's it. The installation is done. What's going to follow now is what's called configuration, which is how to set up local customization type stuff. <clears throat> For example, I am not Buffo the Clown, so I'm going to want to create a whole new user, and I might even want to create a user group that I'm going to use. But I've got this linguine pasta over here that I said I made, you know, with the mushrooms and the, and the asparagus tips and the, 
and the shave is, you know, uh, Parmesan in there, and I want to go eat that. So I know you guys just uh, jumped in, but what I want to do is I want to close down this very quickly, this stream, because this stream is a compartmentalized, very small, short, targeted stream about how to install Debian Linux, just to get to this point. And then I'll continue with configuration and setup and stuff like that in about <clears throat> in about uh, not 10 minutes at the half hour at the half hour mark I'll be right back here and then we can start looking at okay so you installed Linux now what you know now, now what do you do right it's a Linux machine now what do I do right okay so everybody this was a functional stream okay functional <laughs> okay, yeah, I want to uh, attack the, uh, the the Lugini. All right, guys, uh, thanks for listening. It's really kind of cool that people uh, drop in, uh, but the installation is done. So, you know, it's really easy to do unless you're on a MacBook Air. If you got an Apple product, woe be unto thee and the suffering and the pain that you will go through if you have an Apple product. Don't do that. Don't bad. Bad things happen. MacBook Air is a nightmare to try to install something like this into. An ordinary Lenovo laptop slides in just as well. You just saw it all. I just did it all live. Slick. I can do this with a coffee in my hand and get the whole installation done in like 10 minutes. You know, because I don't have to install a desktop. I might just install just a baseline. Like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that's it. Done. With a coffee in my hand. MacBook Air, you will need uh, probably trauma therapy after trying to deal with it. Just don't. Okay, I, I'm going to go eat, and I'll be back at, uh, at the bottom, at the half hour mark. I'll be back, and I'll fart around with configuration. All righty? Okay. Thanks, everybody. That's, that's how to install Debian Linux. Easy. <laughs>